39th study, 39th study of the Bible. And we're looking at the two avenues, the West and the East. The Alexandrian and the Antioch of the Bible. We know Antioch is the biblical. They were first called Christians in Antioch. In the last two uh, sessions, we looked at the West. Last week, we looked at uh, Brook Cross Westcott, the first father. Now we're looking at the second father, Fenton John Anthony Hort. Now let me give you a little side note here. If your Bible is not King James, if it's any of the NIV, American Standard, Revised Standard, English Standard, Good News, all the other crap. I like to say another word, but that would be vulgar. Westcott and Hort are your fathers. And if you got such a version as your Bible, you need, before you go further with Mr. Hort, you need to go back to last week to Mr. Westcott. Because Mr. Westcott and Mr. Hort are the fathers, are the foundation, not Jesus Christ. They are the foundation of your modern Bibles that come out of Alexandria that I say are of Satan and of hell. I'm not only a King James only. I am a firm believer that the King James today is the very word of God. That your NIV, any PDQ in your terrible Satan Bible, in the English version, and in the SAB, in the New King, I believe all that is of Satan. I don't even get. I know preachers that give them give them leeway. I don't, because it attacks the deity of Jesus Christ, it attacks the blood of Jesus Christ, it adds and removes Scripture and words. This is why we're doing this study. To show you the error of Westcott and Hort and Alexandria and try to bring you over to the Antioch, to the King James. So, Mr. Fenton John Anthony Hort, your modern Bible, what you believe, what you hold, what you read, and it's out of pulpits and podiums in churches. He says we would hold the Bible with equal reverence as we would to the Shakespearean play. Wait a minute. Are you saying the Shakespearean plays are divine? Inspired? No, they're not. And that's what he's saying about the Bible. Any Bible. You can pick up a Bible and is just as good as Shakespeare Christ. That's his attitude to the Word of God. Do you hold... Uh, listen, even if you've got a modern Bible, if you hold it to the very Word of God, I hold the King James as the very Word of God. Mr. Hort, and if you, got the, you can see the video, I know Facebook you can't, but Mr. Hort... Doesn't believe the word of God. It's just as common as the Shakespearean play. I have never read, as far as I know, any of the Shakespearean play. I don't care to read them. I read the Bible. And I study the Bible. Now here we go. Here we go. RSV. NIV. I read from the English Standard. I quote from a modern Bible. I don't believe in that King James. Mr. Hort, your father, did not believe the Bible was the word of God. 
to what's he doing writing Bibles? What's he doing re re revising Bible? What is he doing the father of your modern Bible if he doesn't even believe the Bible is the word of God? And that's what you hold in your hands outside the King James Bible. If you hold any Bible but the King James, your father doesn't even believe it's the word of God. And it, 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 it's just as... I'd rather read, for, for him, I'd rather read Shakespeare's plays. And you can open up the very word of God and you quote from a modern version. Why? Your Mr. Hort doesn't believe it's the word of God, so shut up. Keep your mouth shut. Don't say the word of God because Mr. Hort, your father of your modern Bible, of the Alexandrian movement, doesn't even believe it's the word of God, so shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up. Because when you get up there with your modern Bible, opening the Bible, this is the very word of God, this is the truth, you are lying because your father didn't believe in that. Your father of the devil. He was a liar from the beginning. When he speaks of a lie, he speaks to himself, and he uses Hort and Westcott as one of his prophets. Remember Westcott? Remember him last week? He didn't believe in Moses, he didn't believe in David, and he didn't believe in miracles. And since last week, we've been... Five chapters, uh, five studies in the book of Daniel. I think we did two chapters so far since last week. We do our studies slow and patiently. And all the miracles that we read and studied with Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo, Westcott did not believe in those miracles. Westcott did not believe in David and, and, and Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and they go, Mr. Hort doesn't even believe it's the Word of God. And if you have a choice between the Word of God, go to the library and get yourself a Shakespearean play. I've never heard from any church pulpit, any Bible that's, I don't, okay, open up your Shakespearean plays to act whatever, however they do it. I don't even know how they do it. There is no hell, according to Hort. I bet she believes in hell today. Because the men that Westcott and Hort believe what we, are, what we are preaching and teaching today could not be saved because they even denied the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. And you deny the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. Westcott did not believe in miracles. The resurrection, three days and three nights, according to the scriptures, Jesus Christ arose on the grave. That's a miracle. You must believe the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to be saved. I bet you, West, I bet you, Westcott and Hort today. I bet you believe there's a fiery hell. Now I bet you they would just have a little drop of water. You fool. And you're a fool to get these fathers in their Bibles. You are a fool. You don't know the history. That's why we're doing this study. That's why we're putting them on video. Because you're too lazy to study history itself. I even had a pastor down south of Florida where I, uh, uh, you're getting too much into history. History doesn't matter anything. Now you better get into history if you're going to believe in the Bible. And doctors and everything. The history plays out. What do you think the Old Testament is? It's history. What is the world, what is America doing today? They're rewriting history. Okay. Number four, letter D. This is a quote. I'm quoting. I am inclined to think... Westcott Hort, I quote, I am inclined to think no such state as Edom, and I mean the proper notion, even exists, and that Adam fell, Adam's fall in no degree differed from the fall of each of his descendants, as Coleridge, we'll look at it in a moment, justly argues, end of quote. So the story of the fall of man, Adam and his wife who were sinless, the only sinless humans outside of Jesus Christ, and 
Mr. Horson, well, his fall wasn't anything as spectacular as much as the fall of Cain and the fall of... Wait a minute. Cain and them were sinners. When Adam and Eve fell, that was a great fall because there was no death. There was no knowledge of good and evil. And there were no curses and there was no sweating. And there was no death. But, all you know, Mr. Horson, that was just, you know... Everyday occurrence. You fool. You fool. And you that believe him are fools. Hort took kindly to the teachings of Coleridge. C-O-L-E-R-I-D-G-E. -E. Coleridge was a poet addicted to opium. Ho oh, ho. Well, that's a great real power. I'm going to follow a druggie, Mr. Hort. I'm going to listen to the poet of a, of a druggie. <laughs> a lot of your government today in America is following the druggies from the Woodstock era. You realize most of the people in Washington, D.C. today come out or are part or the children of the Woodstock age? Why do you think Marijuana was made legal. That's what they were preaching during that time. If you ever watch the TV show Dragnet, real stories that the names have been changed to protect the innocent, they, Dragnet will tell you in their programs and the druggies will say, there's one coming a day, we're going to legalize marijuana. 2022, we're in those days. And more and more states are going to legalize it. And they get stoned, they get drugged, they get all these things. And Hort says, I like what he says. I won't trust a holy and righteous God and, and his holy prophets, the Bible says, and the holy apostles. But I'll believe a guy who's addicted to opium. A guy who couldn't even get off his own addiction. And sadly, he never escaped the addiction. And it did indeed affect his creativity and his beliefs, both Hort and Coleridge. Drug changed their mind. Do you realize the fact is your modern, your modern Bible may be on the idea of a druggie? Maybe you have to have the druggist Bible. I know they have a druggist, but, you know, of all the medic, uh, 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 doctors show me, we're looking up medication one time. But I'm not talking about a, a big book with medications and pills and the shapes, the colors, and what is written on the pill. I'm talking about a drug. A man addicted to a drug. Mr. Hort would listen to that guy. And you read his nonsense, and you take that nonsense as the very word of God, and to quote Mr. Hort, the fool, I don't believe the Bible is the word of God. Wait a minute. Contradiction. Contradiction. You think it's the Word of God. The man that came up with the Bible that you hold doesn't believe it's the Word of God. Let's see. I got in my hand a can of soda, but it's not a can of soda. But it's a soda. But it's not a soda. Okay? I got a diet soda, uh, can of soda, but it's not a diet can of soda. Somebody's been smoking something. Well, I, don't, I don't know. What, what do you do with opium? You smoke it? Sherlock Holmes used to shoot it in his arm. Did you know Sherlock Holmes, the great sleuth of, of the books, did, did cocaine and he did opium? I guess that's why Holt said, I like it just as much as Shakespearean plays. Maybe he liked Shakespeare. Uh, I don't know what was uh, Sherlock Holmes around in his time. I'm looking at this guy. I'm looking at his eyes like, ooh. All right. Letter F. Quote. Quote. Have you read Darwin? How I should like to talk with you about it. In spite of the difficulties, I'm inclined to think it's unanswerable. In any case, it is, treat, it is a treat to read such a book. End of quote. 
Jesus said, go to all the world and preach the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mr. Hort, what would you like to talk about? Darwin's book. Wait a minute. He got from a druggie that Eden really wasn't Eden to the fact is he didn't believe the word of God. He thinks that you should have Shakespeare in play. I would seriously doubt, like Mr. Westcott, evolution. Mr. Westcott came out and said evolution. Hort dabbled in evolution. And reading the books of Darwin and said, I would like to talk to you about the books of Darwin. Never mind the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Revelation, Psalms. Which his friend, Westcott, didn't even believe. And Mr. Hort didn't even believe it's the word of God. But I'll talk to you about Darwin. This is the father of of your modern Alexandrian books called Bibles. ASV, Living Bible, Good News Bible, English Standard Version, RSV, The, the New World. All those modern Bibles is not King James. You have Mr. Westcott, we talked about this week, uh, last week, and we're talking about Mr. Hort, who doesn't even believe it's the Word of God, and you are reading of his Bibles, proclaiming it is the Word of God, that he doesn't believe is the Word of God, I just told you, and he rather talk about evolution than talk about the Gospel. No wonder Christians are not out witnessing. This guy didn't witness for God, he witnessed for Charles Darwin, while listening to a guy who was addicted to opium and running to the library to get Shakespeare. And you wonder why the churches are so messed up. Letter G. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Go back. Letter F, number one. But the book which has most engaged me is Darwin. That's a quote. Quote, the book that has most engaged me is Darwin. Whatever may be thought of it, it's a book that one is proud to be a contemporary with. My feeling is strong that the theory is unanswerable. If so, it opens up a new period. End of quote. This guy, Mr. Hort, would... Can I say my own personal opinion? Would like to have the Darwin books put into the Bible. He is a book. Hey, I'll talk to you about Darwin. And the, the, what, what, well, what book excites you, Mr. Hort? Proverbs? John's Gospel? Are you excited about the book of Revelation? The book of Job, maybe? Psalms? No, Mr. Hort says, the writings in the books of Darwin excite me. And that's the father of your modern Bibles, the ESV, the NIV, and all those other junky Bibles that are of Satan. That's why I say these modern Bibles are of Satan. Look at Westcott and look at Hort. They are ambassadors. They are prophets of Satan the liar and they're probably in hell today where their Bibles are going to go you won't heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall, shall not pass away you're not going to find their Bibles you're not going to find the Alexandrian Bibles in heaven you'll find the King James and the family of the King James the Geneva and, and the great Bible and all them will be in heaven, but not the works of these guys. All right, number G, or letter G. The fact is, quote, quote, I do not see how God's justice can be satisfied without every man suffering in his own person and in full penalty for his sin. End of quote. Wait a minute. Did you just, I quote, what he said. Did you just hear what I said? I'm going to quote, quote, 
The fact is, I do not see how God's justice can be satisfied without every man suffering in his own person the full penalties of sin. End of quote. This man believed you don't get what you deserve. He believes in the in the opposite of mercy and grace. Man, he has denied the grace and the mercies of Isaiah 53, the sufferings and the death of Jesus for the sinner. And he said, "You, I, I don't understand that. I don't understand how Jesus could take our sin, how he can be bruised and with his stripes right here. I think every man should get his own justice. You are a fool. Now, do you care to see what places in the Bible he removes in your modern Bibles? Maybe creation, because he doesn't believe in creation. Do you look at the founders of Westcott and Hort and see where, why the places are removed? Why the deity of Jesus Christ is removed? Why is the blood removed? Because this guy says, I think you should get what you deserve. No, 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 I don't want what I deserve because I deserve hell and double hell and triple hell and quadruple hell and tenfold hell. But thanks to the mercy, thanks to the grace of Jesus Christ suffering and dying upon Calvary's cross for my sins and believing that he died on that cross and he was buried and he arose again the third day according to scriptures believe on that i am not going to hell i am going to heaven i am a child of god and my sins that are under the blood are not to be ever reminded again first john 1 9 and this guy said we all should suffer more that completely denies the gospel. That's why he's not out preaching the gospel. He'd rather preach evolution. Well, let this man be a monkey's uncle. I'm a child of God. By God's grace and God's mercy. He didn't believe in grace and mercy. Check his Bibles and see how much grace and mercy is removed. Check his Bibles find out about the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Check his, his, his scriptures about the, oh, he don't believe in the scriptures, but check it about the death of Jesus, about the atonement of Jesus, by the redemption of Jesus, and the man that says we ought to get what we deserve and more. No wonder his Bibles have been changed. Because he doesn't believe what he changed that is in the word of God that he doesn't believe is the word of God. Here's your father. Who's your father? Quote, Certainly nothing can be unscriptural than the modern limiting of Christ bearing our sins and suffering to his death. But indeed, that is only one aspect of an almost universal heresy. End of quote. The sacrifice of Jesus for sins. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sins of the world. Mr. Hort, your Bible father, the Alexandrian, the, the Alexandrian Bible says it's unscriptural of Jesus Christ's sufferings and death. That's why those places in the Bible are removed. Because he didn't believe in it. And he don't want you to believe in it. Isn't that scary? And you hold his Bibles as the very word of God and he says there is no word of God. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's unscriptural. Up from the grave he arose. His horse said, suffer in hell you ought to do. I'm quote, quotes. I'm making a quote in signs here. He, Mr. Hort, was a non-believer of Christ Jesus. That's your, that's your, that's your father of your modern Bibles. 
Mr. Hort did not believe in, in Christ Jesus. He's in hell burning today. And I say that without any remorse and no apologies. Mr. Hort, what do you think of Jesus today? You have a drop of water? Letter H. Westcott, Gorham, C.B., Scott, Benson, Bradshaw, Lord, and etc. And I, this is him speaking, quote, him and his buddies have started a society for investigation of ghosts and all supernatural appearances and effects, being all disposed to believe that such things really exist and ought to be discriminated from hoaxes and mere subject delusions. We shall be happy to obtain any good accounts well authenticated with names. Westcott is drawing up a schedule of questions. Coke calls us the Cock and Bull Club. <laughs> Man. Our temporary name is the Ghostly Guild. End of quote. Mr. Hort with Mr. Westcott said, we're going to start a supernatural Ghostly Guild, which was Cock and Bull Club. I believe in ghosts. <laughs> And we want to prove the good ghost from the lying ghost while we put a lying Bible that I don't believe is the, the word of God, Mr. Hort said. He believes in ghosts, but he can't believe in the atonement and the finished work of Jesus Christ. <laughs> fool. And you're a fool for following him. You, 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 you with, with you with that perverted Bible, you are a fool for following a fool. The man that wrote your Bible said, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in the word of God. You got a ghost story? Tell us. Mr. Westcott is making up a list of questions to ask you. We want to prove our ghost is real. Who are you going to call for the word of God? Ghostbusters! Ding, ding, ding. You know, I think this would be a movie if it wasn't true. That's why I put, for Mr. Hort, I had put into this study things that came out of his mouth or his words. Mr. Hort would enjoy a Shakespearean play or the Ghostbusters movie rather than go hear the preaching of the cross of Jesus. And when you open up a Bible to him, he didn't believe it's the Bible. And that we would all come from the state of evolution and not a creation of God. Mr. Hort, how's hell doing? By the way, it also says that Hort believes such ghosts and paranoia activities and even as poltergeists. Hey, there's another movie he would do. I think they did a poltergeist one, two, and three. He would enjoy that. He would enjoy those things rather than the word of God that he didn't believe in and you hold in your lap a Bible written by a man who doesn't believe in the word of God and doesn't believe in Jesus. That is your father, not mine. Wherefore, by their fruits you should know them. What fruits has Westcott and Hort fruit? Have you thrown your Bible out in the garbage yet? Go down to the nearest bookstore, go to the online, and get yourself a King James Bible. Not a new King James, a King James. And make sure you check the, the book of Acts, chapter 7, I forget what verse it is, but make sure it says Jesus and not Joshua. You see, Satan is very slick. There are King James Bibles that are proclaimed to be King James Bibles, and they're not. 
my wife, before she died, you, you give her a Bible, she could open that Bible, she could tell you it was a real King James or it wasn't. I know many pastors' wives, they don't even realize what, what the Bible says. Don't even believe what the Bible says. There's your father. Hello, Mr. Hort. And with this study, the cock and bull club was a follower of John Henry Newman. You remember John Henry Newman? We did this study three weeks ago, the Oxford Movement where they tried to change, get all of England back to the Roman Catholic Church. And in America, all the colleges have the Catholics by the Newman Foundation to bring them back to the Catholic Church. And they have united with Westcott and Hort. Man, I would call them the devil's disciples. Nine more. You need nine more. And Newman and Westcott and Hort are involved in anti-Bible, no scripture, can't believe the Bible, evolution, and ghost, and poltergeist. And friend, this is what your modern Bible, if it's not King James, this is the source of your Bible satanic and devilish. And you thought Ante Lavaz's Bible, the Satan Bible, you thought that was bad. No, that, he proclaims what it to be, Satan's Bible. The NIV, the ASV, the RSV, the Good News, the New King James, they're all imitators. They're all anti-Bibles like the Antichrist that's coming. And the Antichrist that were around when the apostles were preaching and teaching. He brought the Codex Vaticanus, Vatican, 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 Roman Catholic, Mr. Newman. I think Vaticanus, Vaticanus. That's a great to call that Codex. Vaticanus. And the Latin Vulgate, which became the infallible authority. So even with the Vaticanus, the Alexandrian text, Still, Mr. Hort said it's infallible, but we'll use that one better. Because there's more wickedness, there's more devilishment than the true and foundational way of the Holy Spirit of the Antioch Church. <clears throat> Excuse me. 1881, the Translation Committee. Revised a version. Revised Version, England, 1884. That's what sank England. The Revised Version of the 1884, when England left the King James Bible for the Revised Version, and you look at it, that's where England fell. And it went with the Balfour Declaration where they were going to give Israel everything back, but we got to give some to Jordan. So let's praise Jordan more than Israel. That's where England sunk her Amarada. And they've not gotten back. In England today, it is a fourth na nation. It's got witchcraft. It's got it's got new age, and it's got dopey, loopy people. Where America is falling right behind. To America, we have the American Standard Version, 1901. That's what sunk America. 1884, the Revised Version sunk England. 1901, the American Standard Version sunk America. But it had no apocrypha, that's okay. It's still a wicked Bible. So the final authority of all seminaries of America will soon be the world. The Greek professors and scholars use and rant and the fathers of this work, the devilish, wicked work, go back and get last week's study, Westcott, this week's study, Hort. You, you, if, if you have any Bible not, you heard of Westcott and Hort. Here they are. And to add a third three weeks or four weeks ago, 
Mr. John Henry Newman. You got the satanic trinity of the modern Bibles. Mr. Newman, Mr. Westcott, and Mr. Hort. And if you hold any Bible but the authorized King James 6011 Bible, that's your men.